It took a lot of research to figure out what in the Hellman's mayonnaise I was doing, and what I wanted. In this video, I am passing on the information I learned and hopefully making this journey less of a head scratcher and less of a fire hazard. I am covering a lot of information in this video and I'm going a little quick, so don't feel bad if you have to rewatch it two or three times. Do I even need a dust collection system? So far I've been okay without one. Well, I used to let the wood chips fly as well, but it's much easier to collect them before they hit the ground and by having a system to suck up the sawdust, you also capture the smaller particles, which can float around in the air for up to 30 minutes. <coughs> Multiple health problems can occur if you inhale too much sawdust for a prolonged period of time. I have found that hooking my vacuum up to my table saw gives me a better usage experience. The pieces aren't being thrown back at me, and I don't have a pile of sawdust I have to clean up later. Mainly, I was excited to eliminate air particles from my sander, it has this little bag, which we all know really does very little, but this is the smaller, finer particles that you want to avoid breathing in. Let's start with the engine of this train. There are three types of systems you can purchase for your shop. A dust extractor, a dust collector, or a shop vacuum. I stuck with Old Reliable because I already owned one, it's cheaper, and it takes up less space in the shop while still delivering powerful suction. Mine is an 8 gallon, 30 liter, 3.5 horsepower vacuum and handles my entire system like a dream. A dust collector is made specifically for a wood shop. Cheaper dust collection systems can be installed with a 4 inch wide hose or ductwork. A dust collector is a high airflow, low suction. It moves a larger total amount of air, but it won't be able to pick up larger wood chunks, nails, or anything like that. They also have poor filtration. Air is sucked into the unit and escapes out of the bag. The bag's fine threading traps some of the dust particles, but releases a lot of it back into the air. You can't connect a small handheld power tool like a sander and expect them to work with efficiency. Single stage dust collectors are starved of the airflow required to keep them operating at 100% when you reduce the diameter of the hose. For higher suction, you need either a shop vac or a dust extractor. The shop vac, your most affordable option. Shop vacuums are lower airflow, high suction. They do not move near as much air as dust collectors. However, they do a better job of removing larger debris. It's louder than a dust collector, and you'll find yourself cleaning out the dust bag of even a huge shop vacuum much more frequently, especially with tools that create a lot of dust chips. However, you can attach a cyclone system to your vacuum to elongate your filter life and reduce the number of times you have to empty out your vacuum's drum. I'll go in depth here in a minute. A dust extractor is like a shop vac, but these are high airflow, high suction. Dust extractors have better filters that trap airborne dust particles. This is, however, the most expensive option. A dust collector is also quieter than a shop vac which is great if you're working for a long time in an enclosed space. Life is a highway, I wanna drive it all night long. The next question on everybody's mind that they're too scared to Google is does size matter, both length and diameter? Vacuum hoses come in all sorts of lengths and sizes. Portable vacuums have as thin as a 1 inch hose, while larger dust collection systems can support up to a 6 inch hose. These smaller vacuums have thin stretchy hoses for a reason. The motors are small and having a thin hose at its shortest length gives you the most suction, while larger dust collection systems jump to a 4 or 6 inch hose because of their name, dust collection. Generally, these have larger motors and have an easier time moving smaller particles. But again, they struggle picking up the smaller wood chips, nails, or other debris. And that's why they're called dust collectors, not wood chip nail collectors. The longer a hose on the dust extractor, the more air friction it occurs. Portable dust extractor hoses aren't perfectly smooth like the tubes that you find running through the shop. Those ridges, which help strengthen the hose, create friction as air passes over them and reduces performance the longer the hose. Going from the 6 foot hose that came standard with my vacuum to a 20 foot boom arm hose that now hangs overhead did not impact my performance for two reasons. One, 
we set up an enclosed system so everything is airtight there are no leaks there's no gaps for my suction to take a dip and two we took measures to make sure that my vacuum's filter stays as clean as possible because that is when things hit the fan guys so those are the two aspects that kind of make this happen and there is a video where a guy takes a standard shop vac he puts a 100 foot long hose on it he runs all kinds of weird crazy tests i don't know where he gets this equipment from and there was not a large dramatic loss in suction it still operated as normal now that is going to be for the length of the hose so if length of hose matters does the diameter matter and yes it does as you shrink the diameter of your opening two things occur your cfm the air volume drops and your suction power increases suction power is what gets debris moving while cfm keeps it going so if you wanted to have slightly higher suction and pick up larger debris going to a smaller diameter hose makes sense on the other hand if you're collecting airborne particles like fine sawdust a larger hose that pulls in more air from a larger area makes more sense. I found this two and a half inch hose on Amazon and it worked out perfectly. I'd end up buying two 20 foot lengths because I was running two separate pieces and the 50 foot length was more expensive because of the length. I only needed two pieces. I was cutting it in half anyways. And I chose this one because it is a flexible tubing. It can shrink down if I need it to. It's pretty sturdy. This, this is the only thing I was scared about is how soft the whatever this is made out of was. And I'm surprised at how durable this actually seems. It's not going to get wood chips and nails poking through. And it you have the ability to bend it and turn it in whatever direction you need. So this hose was perfect. And also, you can watch the wood chips fly through it like it's a large hamster tube. And that's honestly why it's clear. If you have a bigger shop, you lucky ducks and wish to run let's say 40 feet of tubing throughout i would recommend using a pvc tubing since it has a smooth interior and will reduce air friction giving you more suction for any corners use street elbows which are longer gentler turns for debris and install cleanouts for easy maintenance tight corners make the air sawdust and chips slow down and require more suction to speed them back up think of it like when you're going around a corner in your car if you don't drive like my mom. The corrugated tubing is easier to set up, but those little grooves cause the sawdust and chips to bump and bounce around on their way to the collector. Again, not as efficient because they're slowing down. A smooth PVC pipe can be much longer without a reduction of suction. I'd shy away from air system ductwork. Every seam you will battle with leaks. Every point you connect, you will have gaps. It's like using a straw that has a crack in it. Annoying and it also decreases the suction power between your vacuum and the tool. So we've picked out the engine and the tubing. Now we need to plan and map out exactly where you want to run tubing. Do you want all of your tools to have their own hoses or are you okay with moving a hose to a tool you do not use as often? I have a full video on how to build this boom arm which allows me to hook up hand tools over my workbench, take it over to my flip carts and then swivel it out of the way when it's not in use. My miter saw has its own hookup that runs to my vacuum. Because of their flexibility, I do not need connections at every corner and it allows my miter saw to be tilted and turned to whatever degree I need. You can purchase what is called a blast gate to shut off airflow to a specific tool or section of hosing. They also make what is called a manifold. It allows you to channel your suction power to one specific hose with ease. A few tips, and I know it's weird to talk about them when I don't have any, but some require you to install them in a specific direction, meaning the direction that the air is being flowed through the blast gate. So when it shuts off, it is the most efficient and installing them face down is ideal with most because if you're installing them this direction and the airflow is moving through, when you shut off the tool, sawdust can land and rest inside of the little groove that, you know, uses the little choppy thing. So when you, go to choppy down, it just pushes the sawdust in, it fills up with sawdust, makes it less efficient. If you mounted them like this and they open and shut this direction, the sawdust would fall through and leave those little grooves for the sliding mechanism to operate as it should. And it's better to place them closer to your vacuum rather than closer to the tool. 
Now, if you're running one arm along the wall and you're teeing into it to get it to your tools, you're gonna have to shut them off at the tool. However, if you just put a blast gate as close as possible to the vacuum and you had one going in each direction, you could turn off an entire system versus just the tools. And then that eliminates putting suction through the tube at all. So it's gonna make your vacuum more efficient. I decided to pass on building a manifold system because I only have two hoses, the one that goes to my miter saw and the one that goes to my boom arm. And then I can also detach my vacuum and take it wherever I need to if I'm going outside or I need to get to the other end of the garage. So these just have the inlets. They plug straight into the cyclone system. I can unplug it when I get the other hose. Bam, that'll plug into it. And that's just the system I did because I'd have to walk over here and switch the hoses anyway. So I might as well just use this system, eliminate the blast gate, eliminate again more areas that could leak. Just throwing it in the middle of the video here. This is actually a vacuum control switch. So I have my miter saw plugged in. You plug your vacuum into it. And once you kick on your miter saw, it tells your vacuum to turn on. So if this is hooked up, so my miter saw bunk, has my vacuum hose hooked in and I turn on my miter saw, it will feel the power surge and it will turn on the vacuum as well. It is a delayed system by like two, three seconds. So you're not gonna be blowing fuses or overloading circuits. Once you kick on that two seconds, you kick on the vacuum. It's actually pretty nice. And then also if I plug an extension cord in or if I'm running the table saw, same situation it'll feel the power, it'll turn on the vacuum, as long as the hoses are hooked up correctly. I'll put a link to this in the description as well, and make sure that you guys are using a over-the-top beefy cord because you don't want any power dips going to your saw. It's not too good on the motors. A cyclone dust collector can be placed on the front lines to collect majority of the sawdust and debris before it gets to your vacuum. Cyclones are one of the cheapest upgrades you can make to your current system, mine costing less than $50. Unlike vacuums, dust collectors, and extractors, cyclones do not require any filters or maintenance other than emptying out the five gallon bucket. These make use of centrifugal and gravitational forces that separate the dust from the airstream. The dust and particle laden air enters the chamber at one point and leaves through a central opening. As contaminated air flows into the vertical chamber, it is subjected to rapid cyclonic, cyclonic forces that form a vortex with the dust collection chamber. The centrifugal force targets larger particles, separating them from the airstream at high velocity and pushing the contaminants against the wall of the cyclone where they slide down the base of the hopper for collection. Finer dust particles less than 10 microns are lifted out of the initial first cyclone and reinserted through what I like to call a baby cyclone. This is where they are captured, separated, and then the clean air can now come to my vacuum. I feel like that explanation was better than the one that I gave when I talked about the cyclone system in my last video. Now, in the last video, we build this entire system together. I cover all of these parts in depth. And what's really cool about this one, is that it has a screw on lid so you don't have to try to snap and hammer and force it up if you bought one of those cheaper five gallon bucket lids and it creates a wonderful seal. I put my cyclone through the rigorous cheese ball and sawdust test to see how the system reacted and it performed quite well. He got a little bit, not a lot. You can see it always sucks it right here first. That's just how it. As for that fire thing from the beginning, running an extensive duct system using flexible hose with a metal wire for support can cause a fire. The air and fine dust can catch fire if an amber or static electricity enters the environment. To reduce this risk, you can ground your hose system by stripping a tiny section of the wire and grounding it to another metal source. Hose lengths less than five feet do not require this, but 
even if you are using PVC for the majority of your sawdust highway, static electricity is still a high concern. So this is how I set up my shop. Even if this seems overwhelming or out of budget, just simply starting out with a shop vacuum that you move tool to tool is a vast improvement from just letting the sawdust fly around. Hey! Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this content. My goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2024, so a like would be greatly appreciated. And for the 70% of viewers who are not yet subscribed, go ahead and click on that beautiful man right there, so that way you're not missing out on awesome content like this in the future. Again, thank you so much. All right, it's, it's over. The video's over.